Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. It's just me again today, folks. It's actually Sweet Tea's birthday today, so be sure to maybe go over on Instagram or something and wish her a happy birthday. But uh, we're picking up with day five of our journey through Holy Week devotional, the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, and I'm also going to read the Devo. The scripture is Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 36. And they say this, They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not my own. The devotion is titled, Broken But Not Defeated. The Garden of Gethsemane, a place where olive oil was crushed and prepared. But on this night, it was the place where Jesus' spirit was crushed as he prepared for the suffering that awaited him. Although Jesus knew what he had to do, he was still overwhelmed by the task ahead. He was fully God, but also fully man, and as his crucifixion neared, his grief became greater. But in the midst of his grief, this is how Jesus responded. Jesus acknowledged the pain. Almost immediately after arriving at the garden, Jesus told his disciples about his emotional distress. He didn't try to hide it. Instead, he asked his closest friends to support him during his suffering. If Jesus openly talked about his emotions, then we should feel empowered to do the same thing with people that we trust. We weren't meant to go through painful situations alone, and Jesus' actions confirm this. Next, Jesus acknowledged the grief. Jesus then went and spent time in prayer, but even before God, he didn't try to downplay his sorrow. Instead, Jesus ran to God with his pain. His response is a great reminder that we can bring God our hurt and our suffering, and He will comfort us. He is acquainted with our grief because He grieves with us, and He grieved for us. Number three, Jesus glorifies God anyway. Jesus' ability to, to say, not my will, but yours be done, comes after He brings God the grief. Despite the physical torture and spiritual suffering awaiting him, Jesus entrusted his concerns to God, which created space for his will to be realigned with God's will. His surrender became a selfless worship. Bringing our suffering to God is a way for us to glorify him. So when you feel overwhelmed by your circumstances, come to Jesus. Give him your burdens and let him comfort you. He can handle your suffering because he's already experienced it. Today, reflect on what is currently causing you pain. Then follow Jesus' example and invite God and a few trusted friends to support you. And, you know, I'm just reminded of several scriptures where you see people coming through for people. I'm reminded of Moses when basically he was given a staff and and you know, God said, when you hold the staff above your head, you're, you will have victory in the war, which sounds cool. It's like, wow, okay, this is going to be great. But he, as he's out there and he's holding the staff, and then what happens? As you would expect, his arms get tired, and he starts to drop the staff, and then they start to lose the war. But what do his closest people do? They come and put a rock right behind him. They sit him down on the rock. And one man is at his right, and one man is at his left, and they're holding his arms up so that they could get victory. And we need those people to hold our arms up for victory over certain situations. And guess what? As you probably guessed, we need to be people who are also holding up other people's arms. We need to be actively saying, hey, how can I hold your arm up in this situation? How can I help help you find comfort in this situation? How can I help you problem solve in this situation? Or honestly, how can I just help help be an ear for you? Do you just want to share with me what you're going through? Um, this devotional is really deep. I feel like we sometimes forget the 100, like he was fully God, but also fully man. I think sometimes we forget the fully man side of things because he's so incredible 
and righteous and loving and so full of justice and mercy that we forget that he was also fully man, which is a person where there's fear coming along. There's, there's worry, there's distress, there's, there's all those things involved with it. And it really humanized it because there's moments in my life where I'm like, how can I push through this? Right. And then you see it right there in that scripture where Jesus was pushing through in all the healthy ways where he was asking his, for his closest community for support. He was taking his grief to God and he was submitting to God's will instead. He wasn't just asking for the get out of jail free card without saying, but if that's not your will, God, I want your will to be done instead. I want to be saved from this, but I want your will more than I want my will is what he's saying. And I just think it's incredibly powerful for us to do that in our own life and to remind ourselves of the suffering that he truly went through on our behalf. Um, and it's just a really sobering thing to be reminded of. And it just adds to the, I think, the intimacy that maybe we're lacking with Jesus, where if you're someone who's only looking at God as if like this, you know, old man in the sky who's a harsh judge and he's not actively involved in your life, then you're missing a huge piece of who God is to us. And I think it's a chance for us to remind ourselves that, wow, he suffered. He grieved and he grieved on our behalf. He grieved for us uh, and he grieves with us. And so as you are going through trials of many kinds, which we know that we're going to experience, and then we feel like there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel. We are at the end of our rope. That's where we press into him and say, God, please comfort me because I don't see how this can get better. And Lord, I pray that you'll help me embrace and submit to your will for your grander story and your grander purpose that I will understand when I'm with you. But even though I don't understand it fully right now, God, help me to embrace what you're doing and how you're going to comfort me inside of this pain and how you're going to show up inside of this pain rather than just pluck me from it every single time. But I want to pray something out. Dear Heavenly Father, it is so humbling to hear the heart of Jesus. It's so humbling to hear what he was going through, how he was processing what was about to happen, and how he willingly walked to the cross, Lord. But it was so difficult. It didn't come without it. It's anxieties or it's stressful moments and it's pain and it's the, the grieving process of accepting and submitting to what he needed to do, Lord. I pray that you'll help us do that in our own life, Lord. I pray that you'll help us walk to our cross and die to ourself and our own uh, selfish wills, God, but help us have a selfless will that is aligned with your will, God. Help us to live on fire for you, Lord, and help us to not just like try to escape every single little pain or every big pain even, Lord. Help us to embrace you inside it all and try to find your will inside of situations and try to find your comfort in situations and not try to manufacture this ultra convenient, ultra stress-free, ultra comfortable life that maybe you haven't called us to right now in this season, Lord. We do know that you are the Prince of Peace and we do know that you are our comforter, Lord, but help us to not put all of our focus on the comfort that the world offers, Lord. Help us to find the peace that only you can offer that supersedes all of our understanding, Lord. I pray that you'll have that wash over us right now where no matter what our situation is, we can just feel at peace knowing that we are in your hand and the enemy cannot pluck us away, Lord. In your son's name we pray, amen. Well, amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. Au revoir.